Ezekiel 1.16 provides a detailed description of a vision that the prophet Ezekiel experienced. This verse is part of a larger passage where Ezekiel describes his vision of the glory of God, which includes four living creatures and a complex structure described as wheels within wheels. Here's an exploration of the verse, focusing on its intricate details. The appearance of the wheels and their workmanship was like sparkling barrel, and all four had the same form, their appearance and workmanship being as if one wheel were within another. Whenever they moved, they moved in any of their four directions without turning as they moved. This verse highlights several key features. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Ezekiel 116 KJV. The overall impact of Ezekiel 116 within its broader context is to convey a sense of awe and wonder at the majesty and mystery of God's presence. The vision serves as a powerful symbol of God's glory, transcending human understanding and showcasing the divine in a form that is both bewildering and magnificent. Material and appearance. The wheels are described as being like sparkling barrel, a precious stone known for its clarity and beauty. This comparison suggests that the wheels were not only functional, but also possessed a divine or otherworldly beauty. Design and structure. The phrase, as if one wheel were within another, indicates a complex and intricate design. This description suggests a multi-dimensional aspect to the wheels, allowing them to move in any direction without needing to turn. This design is not only unique, but seems to defy the physical limitations of ordinary wheeled vehicles. Functionality and movement. The wheels could move in any of the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, without having to turn around. This capability implies a level of control and maneuverability that surpasses natural laws, reinforcing the supernatural or divine nature of the vision. Symbolism. The wheels are often interpreted as a symbol of God's omnipresence and omniscience, capable of moving in any direction instantaneously, indicative of God's ability to be everywhere and see all things. Now Benjamin begat Bela his firstborn, Ashbel the second, and Ahara the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth, and the sons of Bela were Adar, and Gera, and Abihud, and Abishua, and Naaman, and Ahoa, and Gera, and Shephufan, and Huram. And these are the sons of Ehud. These are the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba, and they removed them to Manahath. And Naaman, and Ahiah, and Gera, he removed them, and begat Uzzah, and Ahihud. And Shaharaim begat children in the country of Moab, after he had sent them away. Hushim and Bara were his wives. And he begat of Hodesh his wife, Jobab, and Zibia, and Mesha, and Malcolm, and Jews, and Shachia, and Mirma. These were his sons, heads of the fathers. And of Hushim he begat Abitub and Elpal, the sons of Elpal, Eber and Misham, and Shamed, who built Ono and Lod, with the towns thereof, Bariah also, and Shema, who were heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Ijalon, who drove away the inhabitants of Gath, and Ahio, Shashak, and Jeremoth, and Zebediah, and Arad, and Adair, and Michael, and Ispa, and Joha, the sons of Bariah, and Zebediah, and Meshullam, and Heziki, and Hibri, Ishmari also, and Jezliah, and Jobab, the sons of Elpal, and Jakim, and Zikri, and Zabdi, and Elianai, and Ziltai, and Elio, and Adiah, and Bariah, and Shimrath, the sons of Shimhi, and Ishpan, and Heber, and Eliel, and Abdon, and Zikri, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Antothaja, and Iphidiah, and Penuel, the sons of Shashak, and Shamsharai, and Shehariah, and Athaliah, and Jerasiah, and Eliah, and Zikri, the sons of Jeroham. These were heads of the fathers by their generation's chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem, and at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Macha, and his firstborn son Abdon, and Zur, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zachar, and Mikloth begat Shemaiah, 
and these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem, over against them. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan and Malkishua and Abinadab and Eshbal. And the son of Jonathan was Meribal, and Meribal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Python and Melech and Tereah and Ahaz, and Ahaz begat Jehoiada, and Jehoiada begat Alameth and Asmaveth and Zimri, and Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Benaiah. Rapha was his son, Eliasa his son, Azel his son, and Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrakam, Bokaru, and Ishmael, and Sheariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel, and the sons of Eshek his brother were, Ulam his firstborn, Jehush the second, and Eliphalet the third. And the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons, and sons' sons, and hundred and fifty. All these are of the sons of Benjamin. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies. And behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in their cities were the Israelites, the priests, Levites, and the Nethanims. Then we which are alive and remain. This phrase refers to the believers who are still alive at the Lord's coming. Remain implies those who have survived or endured until this pivotal moment, distinguishing them from those who have fallen asleep or died in faith before this event. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Caught up from the Greek harpazo, meaning to seize or snatch away suddenly, indicates a swift divine action where believers are taken up. Together with them refers to the unity of the living believers with those who have been resurrected, the dead in Christ mentioned in the previous verse. In the clouds symbolizes a heavenly gathering place, signifying divine glory and the presence of God. The chariots that lift up the chosen will be in the clouds. The clouds are often associated with God's majesty and mysteriousness in biblical symbolism, the heavenly realm. to meet the Lord in the air. This part specifies the purpose of being caught up to meet Jesus Christ, the Lord. Meeting in the air suggests a location that is neither earthly nor fully heavenly, a meeting place between God and humanity. It signifies an intimate and glorious reunion of Christ with his followers, marking the commencement of eternal fellowship. and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The verse concludes with a profound promise of eternal unity with Christ. Ever emphasizes the perpetual nature of this union, assuring believers of an unending fellowship with the Lord. This final promise is the culmination of divine hope and faith, offering comfort and assurance of everlasting life in the presence of God, lifting up his chosen Israelites that endured hardship. The concept of lift up, rapture, and Elijah's ascension. In the divine tapestry that is the biblical narrative, the concept of being lifted up transcends the bounds of a mere event to embody a principle of divine intervention, redemption, and ultimate transformation. 
This essay aims to explore the profound theme of lift up, focusing on the rapture from the perspective of the exclusive doctrine and the extraordinary account of Elijah's ascension to heaven. Through these scriptural episodes, we seek to offer a rich comprehension that resonates across generations, suitable for both adults and children. The essence of lift up and rapture. The rapture, as envisaged within Christian eschatology and particularly highlighted by the exclusive doctrine, symbolizes a crucial moment when believers are anticipated to be caught up or lifted up from the earth to meet the Lord in the air. This represents the apex of God's promise of redemption to his devoted followers. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, 17 provides the scriptural cornerstone for this belief, depicting a celestial assembly that promises an eternal fellowship with the Lord. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Elijah's Ascension, a precursor to lift up. Elijah's ascent into heaven in the Old Testament prefigures the divine lifting up, showcasing God's power and his intent to safeguard his prophets and faithful servants from death. 2 Kings 2.11 details this awe-inspiring event. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. This historical and prophetic view of Elijah's departure not only serves as a testament to the concept of being lifted up, but also aligns with the anticipatory nature of the rapture, emphasizing God's selective grace. The absence of the term rapture in scripture, it is crucial to note that while the specific term rapture does not appear in the Bible, the concept it describes is deeply rooted in scripture. This distinction underscores the importance of grasping the essence of biblical teachings beyond specific terminologies. The expectation of being lifted up embodies a broader theological theme of divine rescue and transformation, evident from Elijah's ascension to the prophetic gathering of believers in the New Testament.